Committee, the agency in charge of keeping us safe from cyber threats is not up to the job. One congresswoman saying a cyber catastrophe may be more devastating than the Gulf oil disaster. Morgan Wright, a cyber terrorism analyst, joining us now. Uh, Morgan, why are lawmakers warning us now? What did they find out? Well, I think it's a cumulative effort. I mean, it's over a period of time. Right now, it's kind of the death of a thousand cuts. It's not one incident over time, but it's been this cumulative effect of the impact on our national infrastructure. And I think they realize when they look at the oil spill and other incidents that we lack an effective national command structure to be able to respond to a cyber crisis. I want to give people an idea of what we're talking about here. Between 2006 and 2009, the incidents of federal agencies having some sort of a mm -hmm. you know problem with somebody getting access to information on their computers or trying to attack their computers went up 400 percent so clearly there's a problem how can it happen morgan that the agency in charge of protection doesn't even have the authority to tell other government agencies to protect their computers that's like a doctor who can't write prescriptions well, this is a battle that's been going on. It's a turf war. I did a lot of work inside justice a few years back on information sharing. Who has the authority? Who has the responsibility? Who can make a decision? The problem they're running into is whether it's DHS or whether you've got FEMA or whether you've got the National Security Agency, we're now collecting more and more information than ever, but what we can't do is process it. We can't analyze it fast enough because that's a qualitative thing an analyst has to do produce something that's actionable, whether it's strategic, operational, or tactical, and then disseminate it to people. I mean, it comes back to you've got to have the political will to designate a single agency that's mm -hmm. in charge, and that hasn't happened yet. You know, I think for most people, when you think about something like this, it just seems like it's so out there. I, I can't get my mind around, well, what is the threat? So spell it out for me like I'm six. This could be worse than the Gulf <laughs> oil disaster. How is that? What, what are we facing? Well, I, I tell you, a while back I talked to Bill Hemmer on another show, but I talked. I gave an example of a gentleman named Vitek Bowden down in Australia. He actually accessed what was called the SCADA system, the Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. And he was able, and this is 10 years ago, using a modem and a wireless card, was able to actually open up 500,000 pounds of sewage, raw sewage, <laughs> that went into a local hotel ground out there. Now, our critical infrastructure is now more and more tied to electronic systems, power, utilities, water, energy. I mean, just imagine the effect if somebody was able to take over some of these SCADA systems or change the traffic lights or the air traffic control systems. You could at one time have large-scale catastrophe. I mean, I don't want to, it's not chicken little, the sky is falling. The point about it is, though, technology is getting better. The bad guys are getting better at this, and there's more pervasiveness of the Internet. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. All right, so you've spelled out the problem. You've told us that there, you know, we, we know some of the problems are that the agencies don't all work together well. We know that there's understaffing. Whose job is it to fix this? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it, nobody knows, and that's why nobody can make a decision. Who's in charge? Uh, when I went through and got my security clearance, it took 18 months, and it was held up for three months because I made a very small error on where I used to live that held it up in an appeal. So you don't get enough, we don't have enough people cleared to actually look at top secret information to be able to do this. So that's one agency. Now who can staff? You know, we're competing against the private sector and the government mm -hmm. against, you know, finding highly skilled people. But again, it comes down to th this is all driven by rules and regulations, process and governance. Who has the authority? That's Congress. Somebody has to come up, create the authority so that DHS can enforce this on other agencies. The problem is nobody wants, uh, in uh, FBI wants DHS telling them what to do with their information systems. You know, I got to say, Morgan, as you kind of lay that out, the essence of it is time. You know, that the more time it takes them to fix this, the more time that the bad guys have amassing whatever attacks they want to plan against our cyber uh, security here in the United States. We appreciate you being here, Morgan Wright. You bet, Harris. Thank you.